Hello, this is David Heine, and today we're in a very unusual museum, the Tattoo Museum, with Hank Schiefmacher. And Hank um, is not only um, well, t well tattooed, but he's an author of several books about tattoo. He's the founder and, um, I think, owner and manager of this museum. So, Hank, maybe you could tell me first uh, a little about the history of your involvement with tattoos. With, with tattoo, I, 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 I was a journalist, I was a photographer, I worked for a couple of Dutch magazines, and in the very early 70s I uh, did a few reportages on, on, on tattoo conventions and I sort of got intrigued with the tattooed figure in, in a picture because like there was this extra bit of communication on every photo. I mean normally it's the hairdo, it's the, maybe the glasses or maybe the jewelry which communicate, but this communicated on top of it. So like I got really interested with it and started to collect stuff and picked up my first tattoo and uh, and this collection just got slowly out of hand and like I ended up with a house full of like boxes. And I, I, you know, like, then it gets to the point where it doesn't grow anymore. Like all your books there, if you just keep that all that knowledge you have there for yourself, that doesn't grow anymore. So like, and as soon as you like open up, people bring stuff in, not only artifacts but also knowledge, little know about uh, things. So like, I, I very quickly sort of decided to do. I had to do something with it, and uh, we started in the late 80s by having a little permanent exhibition in the tattoo shop and like since 96 they just told me i forget dates since 96 we have this place we have we we are open to the public and up till now it's been a success i mean like we are the only tattoo museum in the world at this moment uh, there used to be one in san francisco it got like the earthquake took care of the building lyle had to close the place lyle turtle and uh, now we're here, and we have 23,000, 22,000 visitors a year, which is three or 4,000 more than the heavily subsidized archaeology museum, which uh, you know, is also a great museum, but like, we're doing that, we're all right, uh, uh, we'll stay there. If this is, uh, we have a right to, stay, to be here with that amount of people. Well, tattooing is one of the oldest art forms in the world, I think, isn't it? And you seem to have tattoos from all over the world, or tattoo uh, memorabilia and yeah. objects from all over the world. Yeah. What exactly is the origin of tattooing? Do we know? It is the origin of mankind. I mean, the tattooing is, uh, is as old as man. Uh, you know, from day one, they did stuff to themselves, like cutting their hair just to to express himself like from being an animal you know like an animal does not he takes care of his fur but like in 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 terms of a, a, a human being he will cut his hair or like dye his hair or paint himself up so like the the, the tattooing or the scarification or is, 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 is it's all very close it, it happened all very quick and with the migration of man into the world tattooing traveled along and, and like in certain areas flourished and in other areas disappeared again and then came up again. Uh, if Darwin said there is no people in the world who are not, do not know the phenomenon of, of tattooing, so there is always a bit of tattooing somewhere, sometimes big, sometimes small, sometimes medical, sometimes religious, sometimes nationalistic, sometimes cosmetic. Uh, uh, there is people who, who make amulets in their skin to protect them, to like give them stuff to make sure they get to the right place in heaven or to give birth to just men instead of women <laughs> so the the tattooing uh, the tattooing itself uh, is often done in ritualistic settings in many of the tribal areas Today in the world, tattooing has become an incredible phenomenon. Yeah, uh, yeah. What would you attribute that to? I, I, I think it has an awful lot to do with uh, uh, the way we live nowadays. I mean, like, when you used to come home, like, all dirty from working in the mines, you know, like, and just jump in the bed next to the old lady, just all black. You know, it's a different world. It's a different industrial world. You know, we do not... 
are there out there in the dark, leave in the dark, arrive back in the dark at home, you know, like all worked out like in the, in the factory. People working behind computers. And the only thing they get is a fucked up little wrist, wrist from the mouse there. You know, that's one of the new, uh, 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 instead of your broken back from working. So like, men use makeup. I mean, men use perfume. I know, I mean, like, that was an unthinkable thing 50 years uh, ago. So, like, the, there's a big interest in whatever you can do with your body in terms of piercing, in terms of uh, 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 tattooing. I, I mean, like, just think about 25 years ago, like, if you would go out and buy a pair of shorts, there were two or three different shorts you had to choose from two. You go to, there's, there's people who sell underpants, just one store, 250 different underpants with all kinds of crazy uh, uh, variations. So like, it is an okay thing to, to, to do something with your body. At an accepted thing. Yeah. At one point, <coughs> excuse me, at one point it seemed to be uh, primarily in the, at least in the Western culture, among the sailors and kind of the bad guys. Now it seems to be even a middle class phenomena. Uh, the middle, yeah, the middle class al is always careful, you know, like the status quo is al always a little bit careful because they always think, oh, you know, they're looking at me or like, uh, you know, or they want the same thing like the next door neighbor. But like, it, ha it always had that adventurous aspect. I always call it an adventurous aspect because the sailor's tradition sort of started, came from the pilgrimage, came from the pilgrim tattoos in the, in, in, uh, in the early uh, 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 days of Christianity, it, it was you would go to Jerusalem or you would go to Santiago de Compostela, and you would come back with a with a with a pilgrim tattoo. And this was always a proof of a far travel and an adventurous travel, which you survived. And you did not bring a whole backpack full of all kinds of souvenirs to give to the family because you wouldn't carry that stuff. Because you had to go walking. So like that would be the proof. Uh, uh, that is also what gives the sailors the tradition. And of course, the sailors tradition got really big after Captain Cook sort of like re-found tattooing in the Pacific and, and, and gave, gave it the now day name. You know, because the now day name uh, tattoo is, is, is a drum beat. And, 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 and the Polynesian word was tatau. And, and Cook named it after, the, he just took the closest English word and use that for, uh, uh, and, and just settle us up with the word tattoo, which is from the Dutch word taptu, which means a, a medieval drum beating who would close the bars, who would close the beer pump, which is called the tap. So like, well, it's all a Dutch matter. <laughs> so what was your first tattoo? Uh, I got real serious on my first tattoo, you know, like, oh, you know, this, I gotta be with me for life, and I really gotta think what really fits my personality and that kind of shit. So, like, I came up with, if you think long enough, you will always come up with the, basically, people come up with the same thing, your star sign, astrology. So I'm Aries, and I do not believe in astrology, but I have my, my Aries here on top of my arm being my first tattoo by a guy called Tattoo Peter who had one leg and in, this was in the 70s and he, he, he was one of my collector friends. We would both collect stuff on Tattoo. I would find a magazine with something on Tattoo and I would always buy two. One for him, one for me. He would do the same thing. Now one of your books is about your trip to Borneo. Did yeah. you go there primarily to study the tattooing phenomena there? Yeah. Uh, this is a trip. I, I, I collect books on, on, on tattooing, and they're not easy to get. Like especially the older books are very hard and very expensive. And one of the more expensive and very rare books is by a guy called Nieuwenhuis, and he traveled in Borneo in 1896. And he crossed Borneo in three months. He went to what they call the Apokayan, which is the, the the heart of Borneo, central Borneo, and. When I finally found the book, and I bought it for the museum, there was a map in the back of exactly the, his travel. So like as soon as I saw the map, I knew <laughs> I had to do the same thing. You know, like and, uh, we basically went to Borneo with a bunch of money and uh, changed it in all these rupias, you know, and, and because of the current, is, you know, you get millions of these things. So like, 
it all boiled down in two big plastic shopping bags full of full of rupias. In one in each hand, we, we had to go through the jungle to pay everybody a little bit here, a little bit there. And uh, I was there with Anthony Kiedis, the, the Red Hot Chili Pepper guy. And uh, we barely survived the whole thing. We barely survived the whole thing. It had, you know, like, it was nothing we thought it would be. It, we walked away. I just came straight out of the cafe here in Amsterdam and, and stepped into the, the jungle and... We ran into Gengue fever. I had 130 leech bites. I had scabies. I had a bladder infection. So like, <laughs> and one day before we finally hit the other side, Kiedis got so sick that uh, we called in a helicopter and, and, and got him out, and got him into the hospital. And did you find some very interesting tattoos? We found some stuff, although it is it, it is officially that in, in the Indonesian part, because the Indonesian government does not want people to tattoo. The Indonesian government wants everybody to have a nice gray suit. This was a Suharto government, which is still sort of like in, 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 in charge. And uh, I mean, like, the only thing they want out of that jungle is the wood and, 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 the, and the oil and the, and the gold or whatever they can find in, in there. And, uh, so, like, very quickly, uh, the Aborigine people are, are out there uh, get into big, big, big problems. And right now, I mean, like, right now they're headhunting again. I mean, like, I was really surprised to see that shit going on on the BBC. They're just all chasing each other with big mandos. They're back again to where they were. And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's good. Now, there are certain cultures around the world that still feature tattoos as one of their dominant things. New Zealand seems to have a culture like that. Uh, what, what's the deal there? Well, there is basically all these countries had tattoo, and New Zealand had the most beautiful tattoo of all, the moko, the, the facial uh, uh, tattoo. And, uh, but right now we're dealing with a revival. You know, like a lot of these people out in the Pacific all of a sudden realized that they have an own identity and they're looking for that identity again. Maori is an official study at the uh, university and people are getting their tattoos again. They're learning their own language again and they get pride in who they are and like they're putting on their tattoos uh, uh, again. Everywhere in the Pacific this is going on at this moment. Tahiti, there's people like getting tattooed again. They, you know, like basically by getting tattooed in Tahiti, you tell them the French, I'm Tahitian, well, fuck you. And with your nuclear experimenting uh, uh, in our uh, uh, world, just get the fuck out of here. This is ours. And these people go every Wednesday to the airport and just blow on, the whole, on the shells and they're all dressed up traditionally. Their hair is done traditionally. It, 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 it became, again, what it was, a form of communication, a statement of the pride of the tribe of who you are. And here in the West... Because, uh, yeah, we, we get a little bit of everything. I mean, like... Uh, our role is in this moment for me I think my role in this moment is like to help them get this stuff back because we have all their information basically here in museums uh, or, 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 or because like it very quickly died when the missionaries came there they just took care of everything so whatever that is is, is, is in, in sketchings engravings and is in British Museum is in, in, in ethnographic museums so like the hand I did is the last time they did a hand like this in Samoa is 10 years ago. This is against arthritis. So like me being afraid that that might go, I just had one of those hands done. I'll, I'll leave the hand in the museum one of these days. When I, when I kick the official bucket here, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave some of this stuff here. That, that, that's actually the plan. This is part of the museum uh, collection. I actually, years and years ago, was in Florida in the U.S. Uh, and the Ripley's, believe it or not, had a tattoo museum. I mean, a, a, old tattoos that they had preserved in, yeah, yeah. Uh, between glass. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. And so you're going to have something like that? I have some stuff like that. We got a, an 1850 lower arm, the skin of a lower arm of a sailor. Uh, we even got a, a, a mummified arm, which is two and a half thousand years old, which is a Nazca. You know, it's very hard to, 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 to get that uh, uh, kind of stuff. And of course, there's a shitload of people who will come in and try to sell you some pig skin with, with tattoos on there and, and, and claim. So, like, and there's also no price tag on it. 
one guy will give it to you and the, the arm I bought for a hundred pounds and uh, uh, the, the the other piece costed me two thousand pounds you know again the one is only 150 year old the other one is two and a half thousand years old so like, there is no price on it it's just like do you want it yes or no yeah I want it you know like I'll I I think my duty is here now, once I got this thing, it's a non-profit organization, to establish this thing as good as possible so I can just pull my hands off it. And uh, but yeah, it, 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 we're getting there. It, 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 there is a, well, you're here, I mean, this is already, a, you know, like there's a, the media people, there's a lot of media attention, a lot of like newspapers and write-ups and so like next year we're doing this enormous tattoo show of five, five days in the harbor, just to to give us a boost, just to give us a a nice pile of CIF cash in the fist, which we can <laughs> use to, which helps in the steps. Because right now we're always working at the edge, we're always just about being able to pay the electricity bill, the rent, and we we, we need a bigger building. We we got way more than we can uh, uh, show. So like. Um, that's what we're working on, and then then I can like lay down. <laughs> now you recently returned from the U.S. where you were at a tattooing convention. What yeah. goes on at these things? Oh, uh, in the old days, you would end up in somebody's room and everybody would be doing drugs and uh, and beer. And now we're all sensible, so no, we just sit there, drink coffee, and talk shit. <laughs> and then that's it is. It, you see your friends, which you know for many many years, all at the same time. Instead of going to visit the guy over at his house, uh, you. Do, but now we're all there together. So like for a couple of days, and it's all. Hey, how's it going? And then, so the first night is really a big exciting thing. The second night already gets a little boring. The third night. It's done because it's there's still sometimes heavy drinking involved and uh, late late night, uh, but it's fun, and people get tattooed a little bit. People show what they did in the year, uh, uh, show you new drawings. Sometimes build a new machine. So it's actually what any convention is. Dentists all together, you know, they're all like, <laughs> they're all like but like basically that's what it is. They're looking at what you've been doing the last year and just have chats with people. Uh, speaking of instruments, throughout the world there must be different forms or different ways in which people get tattoos or yeah, give tattoos. Yeah, yeah. Could you describe a few that are popular? Well, right now we have the, elect the electric machine. This is, the electric machine is a little bit over 100 years old and uh, so like that's basically what they use in the Western world. The Samoans still use their old tool which is a boar tusk, uh, which they file down into like a comb of little points, which they put above the skin and they hit it with a mallet, a, a chisel and a mallet, which is a pretty good way as, as long as people hold the skin tight. There is the needle and thread method, which 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 was used by the Northern Cree and, and the Eskimo uh, and Inuit, uh, I should say, and. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, you could tattoo with anything, with a broken bottle. Uh, only the result. Well, <laughs> you know, I see people getting tattooed with a with a black and decker. They took they took the uh, the hex, hex how you call the hex saw, and, and welded needles on it, and, and they tattooed this poor soul, son of a bitch with with this thing and like, just like, totally m m mutilated his 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 up, uh, upper arm. Uh, people will take anything to tattoo each other. So, let me ask you this. How many tattoos do you have? 85. I'm waiting for 86 and then it's over. <laughs> I'm 86 myself after that one. No, no, I mean, like, I still have lots of space. I have bigger ones, smaller ones, and they're basically like little collections. Sometimes it's an old time and this guy could hardly see anymore. This is Danny Skews. This is the Bristol Tattoo Club out of the 50s. And he will make you a member, Hank. And so, like, you know, like, this thing, thing is, like, way out of place, badly done, but a hell of a souvenir. <laughs> that's, that's sort of how it works. It gets to that point that it doesn't really bother you anymore if you have, like, a, a nice flower or a butterfly. Or These are all little memories. Got one of the kids here. 
an ex-wife, another ex-wife, a new wife, a trip to Russia. You know, this is sort of how New York City, uh, my photography days, another ex-wife. <laughs> so like there is a, it, it, it is a little bit, yeah. You know, part of life is uh, here. You know how to read it. So what's in the future for you? I don't know. I, I sort of tend to stop with all the ex-wives. <laughs> Anything else, the future is open. It's, it's way open. I hope to get this thing really the way I want it. I'm working on a new book at this moment, on a, which is an, a, a lexion, an A to Z on, 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 on tattoo, which is basically on, 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 on the old traditional type of tattoo with the different tribes like the Apiones and like the old Scythians and like, so basically it, it's like an A till Z, but it's in a readable way. I mean, like I, I like to write it so that people start at A because the, the, uh, I like to add a little humor to, uh, uh, a little flavor to the whole deal instead of like, you know, like the, the more scientific uh, uh, part. That way I, I get away with a bunch of mistakes as well. <laughs> Let me ask you one last question. Uh, what kind of people come in and get tattoos? Oh, you, you used to be able to point at a certain group. Nowadays, it's, it's very hard to say, these people will, these people won't. Um, that changes very quickly. I mean, like when, when a guy like Tupac uh, really got popular and being tattooed, a shitload of black people all of a sudden got tattooed. It all depends what, what, what's happening. People need a role model somewhere. After we tattooed Anthony Kiddis, and who, who had a, a Northwest Coast Indian piece on his back, the Northwest Coast Indian tattoos became popular. And so like it, stuff triggers off in, in different uh, uh, directions by different people. Okay, well, Hank, thank you for that enlightening uh, journey through tattoos. All right. No thank problem. you again. <laughs> Well, here we are. We're actually with someone getting a tattoo. Uh, ancient Morai uh, design by an actual Morai tattooist. So, maybe I could ask her her name first. Morgeit. Hey, Morgeit. What do you have being put on your arm here? I have uh, my Ori tattoo. And... Uh for me, it's uh, just a beautiful um, form I'm oriented to. So uh, when uh, I get tattooed by a real Maori, <laughs> it's even nicer. <laughs> yeah. Is this your first tattoo? No, it's um, uh, one, two, three, the fourth. Could I ask you why? Uh, why you're getting a tattoo? Yeah. Um, well, some people are buying art and uh, putting art in their home and I think uh, this is a form of art so I have it always uh, with me on my body. <laughs> yeah. Have you always been t happy with them after you got them? I'm sorry? Have you always been happy with your tattoos after you received them, after yes. they were put on? Yes, very happy. Yeah, yeah. It's the first thing uh, when you wake up and think, uh, yes, <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's a, uh, it's a sort of extra. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is it hurting right now while he's doing this? Um, no, not really. It's um, almost a nice uh, kind of pain. Uh, you you can feel it, but it's uh, it's uh, yeah. You have to concentrate in the in the feeling, and then it's uh, bearable. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's a good feeling. <laughs> it's uh, mm, a bit addicted feeling. Mm -mm. 
What brought you to get to your very first tattoo? Um, I was thinking about it uh, for uh, several years. So when uh, there was a moment and I thought, uh, now I want to, I do really want a, uh, a tattoo. And I was, uh, I've seen several uh, tattoo shops, but uh, when I saw uh, uh, a uh, documentary of, uh, of Hank on television and I read a book of him, and uh, I was, uh, I, th I thought it was a very uh, uh, different kind of uh, tattoo artist. So I went to a shop and uh, I had my first tattoo by Hank. So I noticed you were with a, a, a man earlier. What what does he think of your tattoos? Um, yes, he thinks it's nice, but uh, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think he, he likes to have uh, tattoos on his skin. No, but he's an uh, he's an artist, so. Um, he likes uh, drawings, and uh, he's interested in uh, in the drawings of the tattoos. Yeah. I have a daughter who has a lot of tattoos now, yeah. and uh, some of them are strange. Her strange. Hers are, are strange. What did did your mother ever say anything about him? Um. Yeah, well, they were uh, a bit uh, surprised, but uh, I think they uh, they see it as a thing that uh, uh, that is it's from this time, so they're not uh, not really shocked. But um, yeah, I uh, I once had uh, body uh, paint. I'm. Uh, I was body painted by my brother, and uh, and they liked it even. <laughs> so they're uh, in that way they're very modern. Yeah. Do you think you get more tattoos? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we've worked our way right up to the tattooist. This is David Heine again in the Tattoo Museum, and uh, now we're going to um, talk with the tattoo artist who has a long Morai name, so I'm going to ask him to uh, introduce himself. Kia ora, it's Dirangi Tu, Amoho Netana. Yeah, it is a long name. <laughs> the short is Dirangi Tu. <laughs> so, Dirangi Tu. Tell me, um, how long have you been in the tattoo business? Um, well, my mother would say uh, when I started drawing on the walls, but I guess it would be like 16. I started 16. I'm 26, 26 now, yeah. And um, I guess you want to know when I started, uh, how I started. Well, I guess it, uh, when I was younger, and be, I was brought up in a little uh, country town in the north called Kaikohe, Um I think I was influenced and brought up by a very staunch kind of Māori background, and then um, um, well, I wasn't too uh, good at, at at school and all that kind of thing. But my my father really influenced me a lot uh, with the spiritual beliefs and um, and my, especially and my grandfather as well. Their jobs were uh, very traditional in our in our area. My grandfather was a Grandfather was a, a what would you call him a family tree man. He would uh, recite our family tree going back uh, generations to centuries, I guess. And my grand, and my father was a, a rungwa. He, he, he kind of worked in spiritual medicine and uh, being a minister of our vow of faith, being ratana, it's a traditional Māori 
kind of faith and uh, and then influence because I guess being young and, and in those in those times being brought up I think it was the 80s uh, and w there was a lot of gang life and there was a lot of kind of like that really appealed to young men at the, at the time get drunk and and get tattooed and, and things like that and uh, and my gr my father gave me a different way of getting tattooed. He, I wanted uh, gang signatures on me and 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 things like that to be with the the boys and and join a kind of a group that I guess we felt disassociated from uh, the English kind of culture that was the influence there, and really look searching for our identity and then. Uh, I found I was lucky enough to be given the identity by my gra and my father and and and, my, and the ancestors that um, that they taught about. And so my first tattoo was at 16 from my father, and uh, it was based from my grandfather's tribe, and uh, it spoke of uh, who I was and and my tie to the land, um, our beliefs, and uh, uh, really things that in time it worked with me and really helped me to understand who I am today and uh, what is my my direction uh, uh, as a navigator I guess in my life um, it was based on uh, wood pigeon which is a, a, a spiritual bird from my area um, and uh, my, my father explained it like because uh, I was a very wild kind of young young boy kind of and uh, he explained it when a wood pigeon sits in the trees in summer and eats the berries that ferments in the stomach and sometimes you can see them in the trees and they get drunk and uh, sometimes they fall out of the tree and before they hit the ground they fly straight back to their home so they know where their home is and also the bird always flies forward in life it doesn't fly backwards he turns his head to refer to the past for his future and when he eats the berry, he he, he shits the berry and uh, makes a tree, or makes a seed hits the ground and and becomes a tree and becomes food uh, for for his children. And so, my berries is knowledge, I guess, of our people. And uh, my life was, you know, now and then I do fall out of the tree, but I do know where my home is to go back and start again. And I do refer to the legends and the culture and uh, and the upper jaw knowledge in in a way my mind's eye uh, uh, that had been given to me through the ancestors um, for my future and uh, uh, try to relay it in my work and. Uh, and and to all people really not really because to me I think uh, tamako uh, represents a rongwa is, is a medicine for the for the for the person it has no color it has no creed it has no boundaries it, it's always evolving and it, it evolves with I mean uh, for for I think Māori's are the youngest of the Pacific uh, last to Mana Island and and uh, we come from all the Pacific Island cultures in Pacific, we're a huge compilation of difference, and, and that's what I think Māori is, a celebration of difference. Um, and I think uh, I've met, well, it's helped me to, to understand where, where we should stand or where I should stand in, in the modern day society. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> if you got more to ask me. <laughs> Well, I wanted to ask you, actually, the tradition of, of tattooing in your people uh, has a, a spiritual context, or what oh, def context? Definitely. I mean, everything that, uh, I guess, in indigenous culture, the artwork wasn't only, uh, it was practical, as well as being, like, uh, beautiful to look at. Uh, it, 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 um, spiritual, I guess, would be... I mean, there's many forms of spiritual you can, you can think. So when I, when you say spiritual, thousands of things shoot through my mind. So to explain about what 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 specific type of spiritual, I guess. I mean, I learn when I do receive pain at, or or the pain of of tamako, it's um, 
it teaches me about my body and the healing of my body afterwards. Um, um, I mean, I, I, the the difference of I see as as European style kind of tattooing to to um, to Māori or traditional style tattooing that uh, they look at the ink, and where we look at the we we look at the skin, and it's the two t- two types of uh, the skin is the pattern, not the not the ink. And uh, the European they cover the the skin and they make the ink the pattern. The ink for us or for me uh, represents the ancestors. And I always work in black. I don't really work in colours, but uh, the black is is the beginning of all things. It, it's the essence of the, of our ancestors. And when I place it into the skin, uh, it's the ancestors complementing the person, the child, the, the skin. And so, it's something to me that's already written. I, um, I'm there's three parts that I'm working with. There's my ancestry and legends and the things that are. A knowledge and and being kind of taught to me. There's also the person uh, I work with that that they have a door that needs to be open, and so I try to talk to them and and help them to understand my culture, and in order to my belief is to learn about any indigenous culture, is to learn about your own culture that once was, and we all lived by the land. We all lived by different. Uh, Different languages, different names, but it was basically the same thing. I mean, we, it, it represents the elements, the different elements of your body, like water, tangaro, god of the sea, 75% of your body, which is the strongest of our body. And then it, uh, for, you have different uh, uh, female signs and male signs. Uh, where we came from is always remembered from the woman. And uh, so we have symbols to represent we come from the house of knowledge, the womb, that Tangaro was, uh, gave to the woman, the first woman. And then we are created in those waters. And then after that we, we uh, have different things like the, the oxygen, water, fire, uh, earth, all those things. I mean, there's, or every part of your body you can tie to the earth. And... Um, and when we die, we go back to the earth, and uh, so it's 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 a very natural. It's all it's all a, a organic kind of kind of uh, tattooing. It's very natural. It's very it's been around for years, even longer than Māori, I, I would say, um, and it's evolved. And, and that's what I I mean. I like I like all tattooing. I, you know, uh, even European tattooing, I like it. It's it's a, just another off step or branch off the original. Their way of tattooing, so, but to I think what it misses is the spiritual content, the real the person. I mean now it's a it's a huge industry. You make money, and you know you can be a famous person. You can you, you can drive in limos or do whatever you want, you know. But uh, I think for me, is I love uh, teaching and I love talking and I learn from people different types of from different walks of life different countries uh, and and they teach me as well to to the adaption of adapting my art to their to, to their way of life and unfortunately I can't go any deeper than a certain level and I can start there but a lot of them I've met so many good friends that I end up living with them I end up spending time with them and I can see them change and they see me change, and they help me along. So it's all about, I think it's it's about life, and uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, getting back to the actual phenomena of tattooing, I notice you're using an electric uh, machine here. What is a traditional Maori uh, tattoo uh, mechanism? Uh, it's a uhi. It's uh, it's kind of like they're similar to the Samoan way of tattooing. It's uh, yeah, with the well, not sticks, but one one is like a arched chisel, but it's shorter because if you look at the Samoan ones, they're quite long. Ours is shorter, and uh, they use lineal lines, and you can see it evolved to us, and then we use uh, organic kind of shapes, and so it had to be shorter. So we we tap it into the skin, use stretching and and using someone to stretch, and then we we use the muscle structure and the. The, we don't really draw it on. It's all 
it's uh, using the muscle structure and natural lines of the body. Um, yeah, I, 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 th I see the benefits in both machi uh, a machine and a and a, and a uhi. Uh, I do use chisel when I'm at home. Uh, I thought this was my first time out to Europe, so I didn't want to bring my, my chisels with me. I wanted to suss that, see what's going on, but also show that I can use a machine uh, to learn about the machine all I can. And uh, if I guess they come out with a laser machine, I'll, I'll probably get on that too. You know, it's just, you know, it's a p type of paintbrush you use when you paint. It's um, it's your preference, really. You know, and but, but I use both. I see see good things in both. Some one's more detail, the other one is is consistent line. Uh, it's always gonna be a consistent line, and um, and it's easier. I, I find it easier to work with a chisel, and uh, and I'm even though I'm still still learning uh, with the chisel and the machine. Uh, maybe I'll invent something else. I don't know, but you know. I, it's just I, I do like using machine, and I do like doing all sorts of tattoos, but especially Māori, traditional Māori, yeah. Okay then, thank you very much um, for all that information, and uh, look forward to our next tattoo. Diagnose, gewichtsproblemen, Ayurvedische therapie? Kom naar Health and Wholeness, Leidse Straat. Uitgeslapen mensen zijn bij Corelli geweest. 2000 vierkante meter lichtcomfort, vlakbij het Centraal Station in Amsterdam.